Hello and welcome to the Brian Horback Experience. It's episode 139. And uh, this is November the 1st. Um, and yesterday was Halloween. Hope everybody was safe and had a uh, great uh, time um, with Halloween. I uh, hope uh, you had a lot of trick-or-treaters. It was cold here in the valley, here in the Tennessee Valley. Um, and so... Um, I think that cut down on trick-or-treaters some. A lot of the churches are doing um, trunk-or-treat. A lot of organizations are doing trunk-or-treat. Uh, so I don't think um, that uh, subdivisions are necessarily seeing the amount of uh, trick-or-treaters that we've seen in the past. Uh, but, um, hey, it is what it is, right? Uh, so let's talk about the city of Knoxville general election. That's what I'm going to primarily talk about tonight. Uh, we're um, just finishing uh, the 13th day of early vote. That means there's one more day. Thursday, November the 2nd is the last day of early voting. So that's where you can go to any of the five uh, early vote centers. Um, actually, I think there's six. Six of them. Uh, Downtown West is the most popular. It always votes the most people. Um then you have New Harvest Park, Expo Center, or the City County Building. Uh, those three have kind of bounced around as the top two or top three uh, early vote centers this year. Eternal Life Harvest um, Center, early vote center over in East Knoxville uh, has been surprising, has doing, been doing surprisingly well over the last um, few days. Uh, and then uh, South Knoxville pretty much... Uh, is always toward the end of the um, of, of the um, of the pack as far as the number of people who vote uh, there. Uh, we'll just go ahead and run through it uh, since we're talking about it. Uh, so, as far as in person voting, uh, four thousand seven hundred ninety six through uh, Halloween night, which was last night, October thirty first. That was the twelfth day of early voting. Uh, 4,796 4, in-person votes. So let's kind of talk about uh, what's happened here. Um, of course, as I said, always the number one early vote center is Downtown West. Uh, it's voted 1,681 votes. Uh, coming in second is the New Harvest Park. Uh, again, kind of northeast uh, could be North Knoxville, could be East Knoxville. It's kind of right there on the cusp of North and East. They voted 933 there. Uh, and then coming in third uh, is the Expo Center. Uh, that's in North Knoxville off Clinton Highway. 713 people have voted there. The City County Building in downtown Knoxville comes in uh, with just 100 and I don't know, just a little more than a, a hundred less than Expo Center with 617 uh, early voters there. Eternal Life Harvest Center over in East Knoxville's voted 461, and then South Knoxville's voted 391 in the in the twelve in the twelve days of early voting. Uh, absentee votes that have been cast early 689, so for a grand total of 5,485 early votes in the hopper. Now, we knew that when the primary ended on August the uh, 29th, um, we, um, um, we knew that when the early vote ended August 29th, that when Mayor King Cannon uh, got more than 50% of the vote, and so she's not on the ballot in the general election, we knew that the number of 16,600, give or take, uh, probably weren't coming back in November. So, you know, you, the, a lot of folks believe there's going to be anywhere from eight to 10,000 people voting in the general election, which means there's going to be 6,000 less that vote uh, in November versus voted in August, which is still a horrible number for a city the size of, of Knoxville at only 16,600, give or take, voted in the primary and that maybe only 10,000 show up in the general. So prove me wrong. Prove me wrong, uh, 
Ron Hornback experience listeners and, and uh, viewers. Uh, so we're, we're well on our way, um, you know, with, with almost 5,500 votes cast in the first 12 days. We've got the last two days, what's in the hopper today that we'll talk about tomorrow. And then obviously uh, tomorrow, um, and we'll talk about that, we'll, we'll publish on Friday what voted on the last day, November 2nd. Um, so prove me wrong. Um, uh, get us, because uh, typically what we see, the pattern is the number of votes that come in on, um, on early vote, we typically have the same number come in on election day. So it, if we voted no more people, uh, and we're at 5,500 early vote. The the pattern has been that we vote about 5,500 on election day, which would give us a little more than, you know, would give us about 11,000 people. Um, so that's good. Uh, let's talk about the races that are on the ballot. Uh, you got three city council at large races. You got a city council district race and you have the municipal judge race. Again, no, no mayoral race on the ballot, right? So you got... Um, City Council at large seat A, Lynn Fugit is unopposed. Why is she unopposed? Because when she ran in the primary, uh, she had two opponents. Uh, she had Darren Warsham and she had Cameron Brooks. Cameron Brooks came in second to Lynn Fugit, you remember. Uh, but unfortunately, a few days after the primary, Cameron um, passed away. Uh, he, he died. And so uh, Lynn Fugit is on the ballot, unopposed um, on... Um, on November 7th. Um, in uh, City Council at large seat B, that's the seat that Janet Tespin won four years ago. Uh, she's not running again. Um, and so uh, she's CEO of Young Williams Animal Center, which um, we'll be talking about that in, in a future uh, episode because coming up this month with uh, County Commission, um, they're going to be uh, giving Young Williams the, um, they're going to be the taking care of um, animal control for the county and the city. That's going away from the Sheriff's Department, away from KPD, and going to the um, Young Williams to uh, be over all of that. And so that's what's going on. Um, they, um, with Young Williams, so her responsibilities changed. So she chose not to run for re-election. So her opponents, uh, there was only two of them in the primary and only two of them uh, in the general. Uh, R. Bentley Marlowe, who um, is a finished um, law school, passed the bar, but uh, he uh, got into the real estate business. He uh, flips houses, he um, buys vacant lots, he builds houses, and has really been, a um, for about the last 10 to 12 years, has really um, spent a lot of time uh, providing housing to, to people who need it. Uh, and so um, he's running. Um, and then um, his opponent is um, Debbie Helsley. She is the um, she is the, the secretary of the, Knox, of the Knox County Democrat Party. She's a former union organizer. She ran last year against uh, Knox County Mayor Glenn Jacobs uh, and uh, got like 45% of the vote. Um, but, um, interestingly about her race is she's the typical politician. She tells you what she thinks you want to hear. Uh, she's had at least two, she's had at least three mailers in the general election. One mailer went out talking about her progressive endorsements. Another mailer went out, uh, bragging about her, uh, fraternal order of police endorsement. Uh, but she targeted those, um, those mailers, uh, the one with the Fraternal Order of Police she targeted toward uh, people who would be pro-law uh, enforcement and uh, the people who would be maybe not pro-law enforcement got the the one with the Sierra Club and the others. Interestingly enough, where she lacks endorsements is from uh, the firefighters. Firefighters did not endorse in either uh, um Helsley or Marlowe, uh, and uh, she's had one city council person I've seen that's been on her, been on her um, financial disclosure. Marlowe, on the other hand, 
has got Janet Testerman, who he's hoping to replace, Seema Singh, and then he's had a lot of former city council members, uh, George Wallace, former at-large council member, Finbar Saunders, former at-large council member, Dwayne Greve, former council member, Ivan Harmon, former uh, city council member, Mark Campen, former uh, city council member, um, Marilyn Roddy, former city council member, Joe Bailey, former city council member. So there's a, a good number of people who have done the job of a city council member um, who believe that Bentley Marlowe is the best person to do the job that they have done for four to eight years. Um, so that's interesting. Then you have a seat C where you have Tim Hill, who is the for, who is the um, planning commission chairman, very active, another uh, real estate guy uh, who's uh, challenging city councilwoman Amelia Parker, who's running for re-election. Uh, could be an interesting race. Um, and then you have Charles Thomas, who's the city council member in the 5th District. Uh, he's unopposed. He was unopposed in the primary, unopposed in the general. Then the big race, that guy right there, uh, Judge John Rosen, Knoxville's, Knoxville's municipal judge, is running for re-election. Uh, he's served admirably for 36 years, um, served for five years before his opponent was even born. Uh, his opponent, 31 years old, uh, has um, uh, worked for four or five different law firms or law offices, um, the public defender, uh, a couple of different law firms. Um, who, um, And so the, there's been some uh, brouhaha about uh, his lack of voting record. Uh, he's 31 years old, but... He didn't start voting until mid-20s. Uh, his first city election he ever voted in was in August of this year when he was on the ballot for judge. Um, in the primary, uh, Andrew Beamer, Mary Ward, um, was in the primary with Judge Rosen and with um, Judge Rosen's now general election opponent. Uh, both Andrew Beamer and Mary Ward um, have endorsed Rosen. Let's talk about the Democrat Party. The Democrat Party keeps saying that they're not involved in the city election. Well, that's just BS. Uh, they're very involved in the fact that the secretary of their party is running for seat B, um, and their state executive committee man is the campaign manager, the paid campaign manager, to the tune of $4,500 a month uh, for both um the uh, seat B candidate and for Judge Rosen's opponent. Interestingly enough, um, the city council, the uh, Bentley Marlowe's opponent has paid $2,500 a month while Judge Rosen's opponent has paid $2,000 a month. I'm not exactly sure uh, why the judge race is of less value than um, the city council at large race, but there you go. So, uh, again, I want to uh, encourage each and every one of you in the city uh, to get out and vote. You have tomorrow, which is uh, Thursday, November the 2nd, uh, to vote at any of the six early vote sites. And then um, you have, um, then you have the um, Tuesday, November 7th, uh, to, to cast a vote at your assigned voting precinct. Um, you know, the other thing we can talk about is um, it didn't. It doesn't take long uh, to go from one election to another election, um, and so um, the uh, petitions for the Knox County um, March fifth primary, which by the way also includes the presidential primary, presidential preference primary. That's where the Republicans and the Democrats get to pick their candidate to run. Nationally in Tennessee, we're part of Super Tuesday, which will be March the 5th. Um, early voting will start on uh, February the 14th. That's Valentine's Day. So all you romantics, uh, go ahead and plan to uh, take your date out to vote, an early vote, and then uh, go go um, get you some dinner. Um, but um, so we have the, the presidential primary uh, for Tennessee going on, the Republican primary, the 
Democrat primary, I, I'm assuming the Democrats will have Biden and Robert F. Kennedy and who knows who else on there. The Republicans have a pretty crowded field. Um, a couple have uh, dropped out. Mike Pence, I think, has dropped out recently. Uh, but uh, I'd say, you know, Trump's polling numbers are pretty high in Tennessee. Um, Nikki Haley should come along uh, pretty strong as she's uh, uh, she's uh, picked up some pretty big endorsements in uh, New Hampshire, which is the second presidential preference primary. Uh, of course, Iowa goes first with their caucuses. Uh, but let's talk about local races. Uh, we're going to have one judgeship race on the ballot in uh, in March and August of 2024. Uh, Hector Sanchez, who was appointed by Governor Lee uh, to Criminal Court Division II, um, that uh, was because Kyle Hickson, who was our criminal court judge, got appointed to the uh, Court of Criminal Appeals uh, for the Eastern District of Tennessee. And so that created a vacancy on our Knox County or our District 6 uh, Criminal Court Division 2. Hector Sanchez is running. He's a Republican. He has turned in his petition. Uh, the filing deadline is December 14th. Um, but uh, let's talk about now some county commission races. Uh, the first district is up. The second district is up. The fourth district is up. The fifth district is up. The sixth district is up. The 8th and the ninth districts are up. Uh, the four races that are not uh, running in 2024 that are county commission. Sorry, I'm petting the dog uh, to keep him quiet. Um, is um, um, the 3rd district and the 7th um, district. Um, uh, it's Gina Oster and uh, Rhonda Lee. They both uh, were elected um, last year. Um and the at-large positions, Kim Frazier and uh, her counterpart on uh, in seat uh, 10. Uh, so let's talk about the first district. So far shaping up, we're gonna have a Democrat primary, a contested Democrat primary. Daisha, Dr. Daisha Lundy is not running again. So Evelyn Gill, who has served one term and was beat by Dr. Lundy, along with Damon Rawls, a very uh, nice guy, uh, relatively young, um, entrepreneur, uh, Charles Frazier, who's run as a Democrat, has picked up a petition to run as a Republican. In the second district, Courtney Durrett, who served as the commission chair last year, is running for re-election. In district four, Garrett Holt is running uh, as the Republican. Kyle Garrett Holt, uh, Kyle Ward, uh, is not running for re-election. Uh, Keith Britt, a Democrat, had announced that he will be running for that seat, so he has till December 14th to get a petition in the file. In District 5, um, Dale Skidmore and Brian Walker are the Republicans, and there's a Democrat, and I don't have the updated list in front of me, but there is a Democrat that has qualified in that race in the 5th District. In the 6th District, uh, Commission Chair Terry Hill is being challenged in the Republican primary by Julie Fritz, and there's a Democrat out in District 6, which is Carnes and Hardin Valley, Daniel Edward Green. Out in District 8, uh, Richie Beeler is not running for re-election again. It's uh, speculated that, you know, he's the chief deputy to the county clerk, Sherry Witt. And it's uh, expected that uh, in two years, he'll be running for that seat as Sherry will be term limited. Um, so uh, DJ Corcoran, uh, former... Uh, Spokesman for the Knoxville Fire Department is run as a Republican, and uh, he has a Democrat challenger so far in Charles Chandler. In District 9, uh, there's a Republican primary, potentially between three people, um, Barry Neal, a longtime Republican, along with Andy Fox, a local attorney, along with someone named Stacy Bryan Smith. Uh, Matthew Park is the Democrat who's picked up a petition in District 9, that's South Knoxville. Uh, and then uh, the Stacey Bryan Smith, who picked up as a Republican, also has a petition for independent candidate. Uh, assessor of property, Jackie Rayleigh, the chief deputy, has picked up and turned in her Republican uh, petition. Uh, Phil Ballard, um, who has served in that position before, um, and... Um, had somewhat of a controversial second term um, 
is trying to uh, come back, uh, but uh, I would label Phil as a long shot. Uh, Law Director David Book, who served four years, is running again, and he's going to be faced by um, the most immediate past chair of the Knox County Republican Party, Daniel Herrera. Um, and then you've got uh, about four school board district seats up in District 2. Uh, no one's picked up yet. That's Jennifer, o the seat that Jennifer Owen has served in. In District 3, Daniel Watson uh, serves in that, in that seat. And uh, it's speculated that, and maybe he's already said it, uh, that uh, Daniel's going to run as an independent. He's not picked up yet. He's got a Republican in Angie Gothert who's picked up a petition. <laughs> And then um, in the 5th District, uh, Susan Horn is not running again, but uh, she has uh, Lauren Morgan, who has already got a very good ground game. And then a uh, one that uh, a lot of people don't know, Renee Jackson, I've not met her yet, has uh, picked up a petition. And then in District 8, uh, Mike McMillan serves in that seat, but so far only Tommy Lakins has picked up a petition as a Republican in that seat. So that's your uh, that's your races uh, for 2024. Uh, you'll get to pick uh, the um, delegates uh, to go to the uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Wow, what an exotic town that is for the uh, National uh, Republican Convention. And um, so look for that.